progress. It's, it seemed pretty uh, easy. Uh, from looking outside, it's like, oh, you did Humana, the New York mm -hmm. Times highlighted you, you've had plays produced nonstop, uh, you probably have only had to eat, you know, wheat germ for a month at a time, right, early on, you've been okay, you're not like rolling in the dough, but you've had a steady succession of work. Does it yeah. feel easy or fun, or are you like, oh, sorry? It does, I, well, I mean, so there was 10 years where I couldn't get anybody to read my plays. Fair and enough. That was an interesting, but that was an interesting period. But you're, because... you're 37 now. Yes, yes. So, so but your first uh, breakthrough was, or, or Humanifest, or when, when, when did you have something stay? 2012, Death Tax at Humana. Death Tax was the role. Was, was the sort of my, my proper professional debut. So that's five years ago, so you were about 32. Yeah. So it was 22 to 32, so yeah. you graduated from college and you started being a barista, or what did I, you do? I, so it, I used to, this is a this is totally random, but um, I ended up running the day to day operations and case intake for a not for profit legal organization, and then started teaching law students how to represent unemployment insurance cases. Um, case intake. What's this? So so it was an organization that uh, uh, represented unemployment insurance claimants who had been denied their benefits. Mm -hmm and we're going to an administrative law hearing to get their benefits back. And I would... Um, As a drama major, of course, you were perfect to step in. And well, <laughs> in a weird way, yes, actually, because my, my job was to sort of, was to talk to these claimants and figure out who had a case we could argue. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, didn't necessarily need to be a winning case, but we need to be able to make an argument. And so uh, th those, are the, those are the core elements of drama. You have to figure out, okay, what did you do? Why did you do what you did? Can I make a case for why it was necessary that you did what you did? Or reasonable to think that you would do what you did when you did what you did? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's storytelling. And um, uh, it, 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 uh, you can tell, it, it actually kind of informs my writing to a significant degree. There's a sense in which these monologues the characters deliver. They make their case. They make their case. They feel like hearings. Um, and again, the, the courtroom is another sort of presentational space. That and you've avoided it yet because it's too obvious for you? Or like, or you'll get to the courtroom at some point? So. Uh, it's on my list of things. I, I do actually want to find a way to reinvent the courtroom drama. I want to do a new version of courtroom drama, but I'm not quite sure what it is yet. Mm -hmm. um, it's the bailiff, I think. Nobody talks about the bail. <laughs> well, I, you know, I did, it's funny you should mention that. I, I did dabble in one once that, that will never see the light of day, and, and the bailiff ended up being actually a really important character. <laughs> so it's funny that you said it. But uh, the Ministry of Law hearings look more like, you know, a meeting around a table with a, right. with a judge and, and uh, somebody recording, and um, that's an interesting theatrical space to me, too. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was great training. Listening to people every day tell me stories about difficult things that have happened to them, and, and trying to think through, wait, how do we solve this problem? And um, how long did you do that for? Uh, it was ten years. It was ten years, and, <laughs> and you were writing all the time. Yeah, and, and hello, I, no big. I had a I had this little basement office and windowless basement office, and no one was around because I basically ran the whole place, so I would work all day and write all night down in the You had a free office there. space, yeah, at work. It was, it was actually kind of great, um, but it, it meant that, that I, I developed kind of a, a body of work in that basement, and then, and then once I figured out um, how to get people to read my stuff, which was actually simply a matter of I realized at a certain point I wasn't really sending my plays out that much. <laughs> Somebody asked me, I was complaining, no one knows. Get anything. No one, will, no one will read my plays. And somebody asked me, "How many things do you submit to a year?" And I said, "I submit to lots of things." And then I counted. And it was it's like four, if even that. <laughs> and then I decided, okay, well, I'll, I'll submit to twenty things before the end of the year. And I think I made it to eleven. Mm -hmm. But That's that was enough. That changed it. And, and so I feel fortunate that I mean, those ten years was hard. And but uh, I feel fortunate to have, um, by the point that people started reading my plays, you know, they sort of asked, oh, this is great, let's put this on. What else do you have? I, I had seven other plays.